Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm joined by Lucy Noonan, who is the acquisitions boss for Lomond Capital. Thank you for joining me today, Lucy. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Why do women only get asked if it's hard to be a mother and run a full-time job? Talk to me. So this really irritates me, Chris. Um, I've worked really, really hard to get to where I am in my career. Um, and I honestly must get asked this at least once a week. How, how can you be a full-time mum and have a full-time job and have a husband and have time to yourself? And I've started to kind of, at first I'm like, oh yeah, you know, just juggle work, life and balance. It's really hard, but you know, we get, we, we get there. Because you wouldn't ask a man this, would you? Well, this is it. So I've started to say, when someone asked me this and I said, well, my husband works full-time and you know, he, does he ever get asked that question? Do you have children? Well, yeah. Well, do you work full time? Yeah, I do. So just there's this kind of culture that, you know, if you are an entrepreneurial female in the industry or any industry and you, you know, you, you have children, that it's, you know, it's seen as a negative that and you can't have both and you absolutely can have both. You know, when, when I came to the Lohman Group, my, they said to me, what is really important to you? And I said, work-life balance. I work smart, but I work really hard. And, you know, it's important for me that I can get, drop my child off at school a few times a week and I can go and collect her. And if there's an activity pele or she's got in a, in a swimming, you know, lesson, I want to be able to go there. But, you know, I have got that network and that support around me. So, you know, I work away a couple of nights a week. Um, but we make it work as a family. So I don't understand why I get challenged, because I'm a woman, that I work full time. Is that society's issue? Um, I think it's sometimes society's issue, but I do think it's an industry issue. You know, ever since I started in a state agency, it's over 20 years ago now, I always do feel, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't like to say I'm, I'm a complete feminist, but I had to work, I feel, a lot harder to get up the, up the ladder than other people. Um, and, you know, a, if, you, if you left the office before seven o'clock at night, that was seen as a, as a negative. I think the, the older I've got and the more experience I've got now is, no, I'm going to leave at five because I want to have some time with my family. And actually, I think that I've been more productive because of that. I've not burnt out because of that. What, what was it like trying to go up the greasy pole as, as a as a woman, and I know you say, well, why are you asking that question? You want to ask a man. But there's plenty of women watching this, and, and if they can learn from people like yourself, you know, if you don't mind me saying that I've known of you for quite a few years, and I would say over the last five years, you, you had a bit of a reputation of being quite feisty. <laughs> and that's, and I've, I've noticed a softening of that. Yeah, no. And that's a, that is a compliment, by the way. Yeah. Ha, has that come through maturity or, or, or what? I think two things. I think I have always struggled with um, being accepted and respected in the industry. So I think sometimes I overcompensated. I'm not a wallflower, so I am very opinionated. I also have done every role in a state agency. So customer experience and the customer journey is really important to me. And sometimes that can come across and has come across as aggressive. I think what's changed is um, I now have a coach um, and they've really challenged me on the way that I'm perceived by people. So I've really kind of have to think now about when I'm about to go into a meeting or before I'm gonna make a comment, what is my end result? Um, and thinking about my end result before I start open my, my big gob, sometimes is it's better to send a more articulate email or speak to someone first. So I think I've definitely kind of grown from that side of things. But I think also um, I'm, I am who I am now. And I think sometimes back in, in, in other roles when I worked in larger corporates or I had a, a big opportunity, I'd, I'd kind of have imposter syndrome in myself to think that I couldn't do it. Whereas now, you know, I own what I what I do and, I, and I'm confident in what I do um, and I am me. So I can be bolshy and I can have that banter. But, you know, I think now I've got the respect from people and I think that's the key thing now is I don't have to try and be anybody other than Lucy Noonan and that's, that is, that's taken time. Do you wish you'd have known that five, ten years ago? Oh, yeah. 
I wish I'd had so, like so we're both mentors of agents together um and you know my 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 mentor I call her coach actually because I really see see her as a coach for me um and you know I, if I'd have had that when I was 18 years old, working as a little negotiator in Countrywide, would have been phenomenal for me. Um, I would have had such a, I think, a, more of a, not necessarily a more of a progressive or a career, but I would have probably do, dealt with situations a lot differently. What would you have done differently with hindsight? Probably not being so aggressive and probably not... Is that, um, was that, you trying to, and again, we're coming back to the original question, you were a woman in a basically a, in, in the senior roles, a male environment. Well, you, you, you said before you almost had to fight twice as hard as everyone else, or you felt you did. Yeah, I think. Is it worth playing the game, or is it worth actually using some of your feminine charm and what God gave you, especially with your EQ skills? Because again, if you don't mind me saying, you're, you're a lot more confident now than than when I met you originally five years ago. More sure of yourself. These are compliments, by the way. Really? Yes, they are. No, yeah, I think. You are. Yeah, I think it's a. I know it sounds silly, but I think you need to find a business that knows who you are and allows you to be who you are. And I think before I've worked for companies where square peg round hole. Oh, we've all been there. Yeah. We? <laughs> we haven't we? <laughs> we both have. And I think you know as well. I, I learned a huge amount from all of these businesses. It's made me who I am now. But I think. I should have had the confidence to go, do you know what? There were some fundamental things that I didn't agree with, but because it was a job and it paid the bills, okay. I stayed. I wouldn't do that now. So really what you're saying is, is, is find someone who appreciates you and what you've got to offer. And you're, that means that the, 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 not the false facade, but the real person can shine through. Get guidance and support with coaching from someone within your business. And you, it's not as if you, can not, not as if you can't afford it because the agents together think, well, actually, well, you know, you can get free mentoring. I mean, it's yeah. brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, I think someone said to me last week um, in my team, you're so confident and how do you do it? And I think a lot of the time, I was listening to another podcast yesterday, a lot of females that come across as really confident and higher up in the career actually have got a lot of anxiety, are quite, okay. do get quite nervous about things, you know. That's natural. But it's quite interesting that I talk to an awful lot of men and I've had some titans on this sofa and as soon as you switch the cameras off, they have the self-doubt as well. Yeah. So it isn't just w women that no. have problems with the imposter syndrome. Yeah. Everybody, you know, gets nervous. Everybody does. God say, my, I, I get it. I, 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 uh, my, my highest position was a branch manager in a state agency, and now people from Titans in the industry pick the phone up to me. You think, God say, I'm only yeah. a fucking branch manager. What the hell are you asking me for? I'm waiting to be found out. Yeah. I think all of us have got imposter syndrome in some shape or form, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. But I think you know, it's about being likable as well. You know, and just knowing what who you are, and if you're afraid of something, I think one of the things that I did wrongly as well is sometimes I'd second guess an answer because I was worried that if I didn't know the answer, I'd come across as weak. Whereas now, if I don't know the answer, I'll say, do you know what? I don't know, but I've got someone in the, with expertise that does know, and I'll come back to you. Showing vulnerability, people love that. And then you don't get caught out as being bullshit, do you? Yeah, there which you I might have done before. The hell, there you go. That's life experiences, isn't it? Yeah. As we all get a bit <laughs> older in life, we realise these things. Um, thank you for your time today. You've been truly exceptional, great inspiration. And I hope you boys and girls out there in estate agency land have learned something from the wonderful Lucy today. Thank you for your time. Thanks.